I was with my manager, and this guy's like, come on, are you kidding me? Buffy the Vampire Slayer? That's going to be the stupidest thing that I have ever heard <laughs> in my life. And it's going to go nowhere. <laughs> Welcome to The Summit, I'm Josh Horowitz. An actor is lucky to have one successful show in a lifetime, while well, David Boreanaz is on his fourth. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Bones, and now SEAL Team. That's over 500 hours of dramas since 1997. I'm exhausted just saying it. Let's meet the man of the hour himself, Mr. David Boreanaz. Hey, David. <laughs> Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time today, man. <laughs> Thank you. Does it feel like 500 or 5,000 as you sit here today? You've put in the hours, man. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's funny, I, you know, you think about the, the, the years prior to all this and where I am now sitting with you and it all feels like a dream in a lot of ways. Um, the work has been very blessed for me as far as continuation into one show into the other show. But I've always prescribed to like being in the now and working on what's best for uh, that particular character. So, you know, I look at it as a great achievement to, to get to where I am right now. and. Uh, some of the times I think in the back uh, past of certain shows that I did and uh, just some really fabulous, great memories and where network television is now compared to what streaming is right now, it's been quite a ride. So talk to me first about your background. You were born in Buffalo, you were raised in Philadelphia. Is that upbringing still in you? You think that East Coast upbringing? Obviously you make your life on the West Coast and you've been there for some time, but there's something about where and how you were raised that still seems to be in your spirit. Is that safe to say? Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a diehard New Yorkian, uh, East Coast person by heart, you know. But yeah, for me, uh, traditions and a uh, family upbringing, born in Buffalo, New York, and my parents are still alive, God bless them, both 87 years old. My dad was in the television business. He was uh, on a show called Rocket Chip 7. He came out of Panama, did radio, and then did this kid show, followed by Dialing for Dollars, where he did the weather. And then he, we moved to Philadelphia, um, I think it was like 77, 78. And he continued on with another show called AM Philadelphia and did the weather in Philadelphia and had a huge successful career with WPVI. Right. And so I was kind of born and raised going to dinners at houses, <clears throat> you know, in, uh, in the early 70s. And it was just big Italian families, right? At, at eating huge meals and, and traditional celebratory um, uh, holidays and whatnot. My mom always cooking, you know, the, the best of the best meals that you could possibly love and think of as a kid. So for me, tradition-wise, it really comes from that foundation of having two great parents that I'm still fortunate to have in my life, um, two older sisters who you know, who are, are near and dear to me still to this day. So for me, it was always about the tradition and the, the foundation of that rock from back east. Yep. That's still deep with inside of my heart, now being in California and living in Los Angeles for so many years. Talk to me a little bit about, you mentioned your dad, and who's, yeah. who had a fantastic, really varied career um, in entertainment and television in different capacities. Yet that wasn't the initial pull for you. And I don't know if that's about, you know, a lot of kids have that natural inclination, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm seeing what my parents did. Good for them. Yeah. I'm going to run in the other direction. Was, yeah. that, was that why you went into athletics as opposed to entertainment at first? Like, what was that about? At first it was, I remember being in grade school, and I think it was fourth grade, and I tried out for the school play, and I really loved it. You know, at that time, I was very much you know, playing sports, doing football, basketball, whatever it is a young kid would be doing. So it was really sports-driven. But in the back of my head, it was like, hey, I, I like I enjoy theater, or I enjoy auditioning, and like reading something off the paper and seeing their eyes go, wow, where'd that spirit come from, right? In eighth grade, I played um, Horace Vandergelder from Hello, Dolly, right? And that was like a huge thing at the end of, of uh, graduating from eighth, eighth grade. And But I maintained my athletics pretty much high because I, I love football. And it's like, if I go out for the play, then how am I going to look to the football team, right? Yeah, like yeah. You, you have these you thoughts. Choose you, know, lane, teenager, you choose your lane, you choose your, yeah, yeah. Choose your lane, and in high school I didn't. And I, I wish I had. The head director of the uh, theater program at, at uh, where I went to high school at Malvern Prep was like, you should, you know, try out for the play, man. We're doing this great play. And I was like, I was close. I was so close and ended up not doing it. But when I graduated, Ithaca College was my main focus because my sister, was there. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Went out to California and I was like, I want to do that. Right. I saw palm trees and Hollywood <laughs> and movies and I was 
smitten. So I came back and changed my major from television communications radio to the film department. It was when I decided to graduate and was like, I'm either going to go to New York City, cutthroat it through that and maybe do theater and whatnot, right. or go out to LA. And I had, my sister was living out in California and I chose California. And I could have gone one or both ways. It could have been New York theater struggling or West Coast struggling and I chose West Coast. You, so. you, you mentioned struggling in West Coast and every actor, you know, worth any, any salt is, goes through the struggles. And of course, Buffy is the big break, but yeah. if by my math, you were out there for a few years prior. Yeah, it was the induction of kind of transforming myself into trying to find work, whatever it could be. So I stayed like doing theater in Los Angeles, studying with Stephen Book, who was a big improvisational technique guy for two years, who was all Viola Spolin kind of work and theater games. And that's really where, for me, I kind of got that technique under uh, of the talent, and it just helped me, right, understand really how to land the job. And it really transformed me and changed me over those two years. So then I started booking big national television commercials, then I was on sitcoms, and they all kind of happened, right, at that period after kind of studying with Steven. And then I found myself migrating over to Buffy, and then my manager found me. I was walking my dog. It was like a Schwab story, you know? And then I go in and meet Marcia Shulman, the casting director. We're talking about Italian restaurants in New York for an hour before I even read for this character. And it helped gravitate that energy from the other person, which allowed me to take the work that I had been studying for two years with Stephen Book and technique and marry that with a lot of luck and a lot of hard work and preparation and capturing a moment, so. Yeah, and what people never realize and how valuable it is to, is to kind of like fail in secret, right? To kind of like do all the auditions and do all that. Yeah. And then by the time you get re you get the shot, you have to be, you know, preparation meets opportunity and there it is. Like with anything, you gotta go through the pain in order to get to the light. And that's one yeah. big huge thing I really look at today as like the big thing for me yeah. is understanding what the pain is, going through the pain, knowing that you got to go through it and have the courage to do it. And on the other end is the light, so. And you never know what the light's going to be, which brings us no. to, to Buffy, which, is, which yeah. is so, like, you know, in retrospect, now we look at something like Buffy and it's like, the world is dominated by genre shows and, and vampires and sci-fi mm -hmm. and all this, and every other show is that now. Back in the yeah. day, this was a weird show. This was not, like, supposed to be what it was. Talk to me about, like, when you get that gig, which happened mm -hmm. very quickly, as I understand it. Yeah. Did you think, like, oh, I'm going to do, like, six episodes and it's done? Did it feel special at all or what? Yeah, well, I got the breakdown. And, I mean, I went in, got my manager in a week. I was with my first agency at the time. And they're like, oh, yeah, we, we signed you for seven out of the 13 episodes, right? I was like, oh, great, it's huge. I didn't think much about it. But I remember reading the breakdown. It was like this vampire with a soul. He was 240 some years old and he's kind of like the Joe Lewis of fighters. You can knock him down, but he's always gonna get back up, right? right. And I, I really identified with the, the fighter aspect of it. Like a guy's gonna, character's gonna get back up no matter how many times he gets knocked down. So that was my kind of mantra going into that uh, that process of being casted for that role. And so I finally get through that process, they hire me, and the next day I'm like, wardrobe, hair, you know, extensive special makeup, like all of these things. I meet Sarah for the first time on the set the day before I'm supposed to shoot the next day. And I remember walking into the set, it was very low ceilings, and there was a fight sequence going on, and she, there was Sarah kind of like in the distance, and. You know, I met her and I was just amazed at how they just finished doing a scene and the crew was breaking up and moving and there she was and she was so bubbly and energetic and, and very kind. And there I am just holding my cool, right? Just like, just whatever you do, you've been there, you've done that. Yeah, you have <laughs> Don't to ever the cool show guy. your weaknesses, so right? Like, I'm like, you're dying yeah, on the inside. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying on the inside. I go, yeah, I'll, you know. See you tomorrow at work. It's going to be great. I've never really done this before, ever in my life, right? <laughs> so getting that job was huge. And then the next night showing up, and I had like a 4 o'clock call. I didn't end up working until, I think, 3 o'clock in the morning. So there I am waiting around, right, in this suit and this thing. And I remember doing the first scene, and I was like, it couldn't have been more surreal for me being, you know, she does this flip kick thing and flips me over and she's like who are you and I'm like I'm Angel and it was like this whole 
<laughs> weird dimensional thing. Like everything's so quiet. I got these cameras pointing at me. I'm like, just maintain. Yeah. <laughs> maintain your calmness, right? You know, I'm nervous. Oh, like, did they like me? Did they like what's going to happen? And lo and behold, you know the story. It just it it, it was it was a great it was great chemistry that the two of us had, and the characters drove that for that that launch of that show, and it was huge. Uh, there was that um, romantic character connection, right? Yeah. That really I feel was the Shakespearean draw to that show. And uh, I remember at the premiere at Gal Berman's house and. That she was just like, oh God, I don't know. I hope this works. You know, <laughs> God bless Gal. I love her. That she's like, I, I, I don't know. This could be the biggest failure. And it's like, what are we gonna do? And then there I am, just sitting there, happy to be there. Yeah. With a suit on, having a drink, just being like, hey, well, here we go. And it ended up, ended up being a really big hit. And it took that WB network to another stratosphere. So yeah, it was a. Big moment. Talk to me though about the transition though, because it goes from yeah. being the weird little show into cover of every magazine. And Annie Leibovitz, photographer, uh, you know, taking yep. your photo. How did you handle all of that? Because that's 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 tough for any human being, let alone a young guy in LA. Yep. Did you handle the fame thing well? Like, was it tough to kind of keep your priorities straight back then? I, I think for me it was that again having that rock of the traditional East Coast and where I was brought up in. And, and knowing the fact that I was 26, 27 years old, I wasn't 16, 17, 18, right? right? I was, I had, I had managed it better that way as far as a little bit more sense of my feet on the ground with it because it was really about the work for me. It was always about going in, making sure my lines were down, knowing and being completely prepared because that was the hard work. I, I, that was instituted into me being on the East Coast whether it was through construction jobs, working in the summer. So I had that work ethic that was ingrained in me because there's the work process and then there's the publicity process of it and you're taking pictures and then there I am just, they got fans blowing, my hair's not moving because it doesn't move to begin with, right? And you know, and it leave with is taking your picture, you're floating on wires, you got a milk mustache and you're just like, <laughs> wow, this is cool. And you're like, okay, that was it, go on to the next thing. Let's, let's talk about Bones because Bones okay. comes around and this is another series that ne wasn't necessarily the no-brainer that now maybe looking back it seemed to be. It was one of the last shows picked up, I believe. Yeah. It was a show mm -hmm. you believed in and you saw the potential. What's the lesson of Bones' success, of the amazing, what, 12-year run? Um, <sighs> what did you see in it that nobody else saw or, or very few others did? Well, I had just finished, uh, you know, shooting Angel and I had gone into like kind of a break and I was doing some other thing and Gal Berman was still over at Fox and she had sent me over this pilot script called Bones that Hart Hansen had written. At the time, I was, I think, up for another ABC show that was called Pros and Cons with a really great cast. And my agent's like, you gotta do this Pros and Cons thing, it's gonna be great. Uh, this Bones thing, I don't, you know, I don't really know, what does it mean? People are like, the, the, the name's weird, why bon like Bones? Like, you always, I always got like this whole weird thing about names of it and I- You're like, I know weird sounding shows. I'm good with weird sounding shows. If it's don't weird sounding, maybe that's the ingredient, <laughs> I don't know. But I remember reading it and really feeling like there was a really strong character connection. It was, to me, it was right off the bat, it was like Romancing the Stone. Right. Like I really tapped into that connection of these two characters always bickering, right? And solving crimes. Yeah. And I love that. I thought it was just genuine, perfect character development. And in, in my, at my mind at that time and where I was as, as far as studying the craft was concerned. And I went in and they, and Gail called me and offered me the role and I was like, I was all for it. You know, and then we had, at Temperance Brennan, we had casted someone else and in walks Emily Deschanel, like at the 12th hour, just as like a, as coming in to read opposite me yeah. against this girl who's already had the part. Wow. Literally, and I was reading with her just for chemistry. Emily came in and I remember the audition being like, she came up, she challenged me, she was challenging the character, which what I read, and it was lightning in a bottle. And we had some of those moments, right? And then we were yeah. like hugging it out and, and we became great friends and we still are to this day. And just what a great person to go through 11 seasons with a show with. You've had lightning hit, hit twice in terms of, you look at yeah. any list of like these like iconic relationships mm -hmm in shows yep. that the fans go crazy for. Obviously, yeah. Buffy and Angel and Bones are yep. top 10, top 20, top yep. five. Even. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what's it like to see, because you must still receive that love and that fandom yep. from folks every single day that are yep. still so invested 
in yeah. those relationships, that must be flattering and also a bit overwhelming to receive that kind of attention. It's it's good. I, again, overwhelming, not so much as just like a really understanding. And I, you know, today it's like I appreciate the the love and the respect I have for these shows, and um, I think it's great. I think it's great to see a new fan base come in and now with the streaming formats and being yeah. able to see these shows and. Bones runs very successfully in syndication, and people love that show. And I and I, I genuinely love the people come up and say, "Hey, you know, I I loved your character Booth. Uh, you know, I'm uh, not going to be an FBI guy, but I'm studied forensic anthropology." And I was like, "That's so cool." So you cool. know, and yeah, yeah. so I, it's very humbling. Um, which brings us to SEAL Team. Look, we all came in together. We all lived together. Twenty American sailors were killed in the attack. You ended that fight and you got me out of there alive. Class so ticking, boys. We cannot keep killing our way out of these wars. Maybe a little mercy goes a long way. SEAL Team, your baby now, which is your passion. Yeah. And a different, again, like looking at the last few series, much different in many different ways and mm -hmm. different kind of rewards for you, I'm sure, as an actor, yeah. as a producer, as a director. Um, talk to me about what was what attracted you to the material initially and what keeps you coming back for more, what keeps you passionate. I was uh, presented a, an opportunity to go talk with Chris Chulak, executive producer of the show, and really get a sense of uh, like of where I wanted to like take my directing and do more directing you know, through him because he's directed great stuff through ER and whatnot. And knowing that they had this script that CBS wanted me, was interested in, in this role for me at a SEAL team, at, at Jason Hayes. And, Sat with Chris, again, long meal, great meal, <laughs> and then read the script, and I was like, I'm sorry, I, um, I'm not moving my family to New Orleans, okay? <laughs> yeah. So graciously turned it down, and two weeks later, I'm sitting in my, um, in my house, and I get a call from my agent on a Sunday, They're like, would you reconsider doing this role? Because the other person they cast is not working out, and we're sitting here with a pilot with a lot of money in, and we have a C-17 sitting on a platform <laughs> here, and we have to shoot that in two days. Again, here we go again, right? So now the ball turns into my court, and I really was taken in by um, uh, Mark Owen, who is the, the, the person who's basically based on you know, for the 13 deployments that he had done. And so it, I was taken in by his conversation and ended up getting this role and showing up and being, again, thrown into this world of Navy SEALs, not knowing what their capacity was and what they had to deal with. And God bless them and our veterans. And it's such a humbling experience to play a role like this. And even more so now going into the sixth season on a new platform. So leave network television, in a way and stream over to stream over to Paramount <laughs> Plus, which is yeah. a whole other experience, has really allowed us to take the show to a whole new level because it's it's doing great. People are watching the pilot now, right. again, that haven't, and they're tuned into it. It could take a, a hit show on a network and turn it into an even bigger rebirth, right? Yeah. You know, and, and George Cheeks was instrumental in in, in, in in getting that show over to the streaming platform and uh, my involvement and passion for the character as a producer, as the lead, and saying, this has to continue. I can't end Jason Hayes like this. So right. we we're fortunate to get over to Paramount Plus. So I love the character. I, um, it, and the biggest reward is is when a veteran comes up to me and says, thank you for saving my life. Right. In all honesty, it's like that to me is what this job is all about. Is It's hard job mentally, physically to play a Navy SEAL, and the body doesn't thank me in the morning. It hurts, <laughs> but I continue to drive through that. And I, again, I go back to going through the pain in order to get to the light. And directing more and more. I mean, you've been doing this for years yeah. on all of your shows. What is, yeah. and I know directing was an early aspiration. It was an early mm -hmm. passion. So it must be so exciting and rewarding to do this more and more on different kinds of series. What is it satisfying you that acting doesn't? Obviously you still get, you, you enjoy right. the acting so much, but directing must fulfill something else. It does. When I'm acting and directing, it's challenging. I will say it's tough. Yeah. It's hard to you know compartmentalize everything and, and really drive through it. Um, I've had the uh, opportunity to direct just to direct without acting in it. It's great. I love it. I love the fact of being able to just bring everyone together and kind of keep them in their lane and and bring out the best in everybody. You know, again, because I played so many sports growing up, it's the same kind of metaphor for me. Right. It's like hard work 
preparation, when those two meet and the opportunity, that's when you strive to succeed, right? And it's always been that way. It's like, I'm never satisfied, right? You get to the pinnacle and you're like, you're working, you're working, you're working. But I really genuinely love working with actors because, you know, I get it, I understand where they are in their shoes and I love to get to their vulnerable spots. I, I think I enjoy watching them transform into a character, but really getting, having the courage to go through it, to me right. is what it's all about. And I, I really enjoy that. It's funny, it's very, it's very full circle what we were talking about in the initial conversation, which is that you somehow kind of like married the two passions, right? The art, the artistic side of yourself, but you're still, I know, a diehard sports fan. And I was gonna say, yep. I feel like sports metaphors, if, I, if there was a drinking game on the set, I would probably get drunk pretty quickly for every time you drop a sports metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I generally put them all in my shows or my acting, there's always something from Philadelphia sports. Uh, yeah, that is, that's, that won't ever change. So what gets you down more? A bad day at the office, maybe a scene that doesn't go well, yeah. or the Eagles losing, or the Flyers losing. It's kind of <laughs> simple, man. The Eagles losing, for sure. <laughs> I'd rather win a, 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 a Stanley Cup or a Super Bowl over any kind of Emmy or Oscar or any kind of nod, sorry. Hey. So, but I will say that, you know, acting and directing and producing, we create, we, we're, we're telling stories, right? Yeah. We're living in a world where we tell stories. On SEAL Team, we tell stories. We get to say, cut. We don't, the real people don't say cut, they go out, they sacrifice, and they end up either dying or they end up with significant wounds to their body and their brain. They suffer from PTS or TBI, however across the board it is. And that to me is like, uh, for me doing this show, it represents that, what their sacrifice is, you know? And I totally love that, respect that, and I honor that every day. And, um, you know, it's, it's a tough show, but it has definitely transformed me. I'm curious, I and mean, look, you've lived so many interesting different lives in television. Uh, what's the biggest misconception about you, you think? That I'm this dark, uh, <laughs> mysterious dude, right? <laughs> you know, I'm very, I think one of the areas that I'd love to get into is definitely more comedy, um, something that I thoroughly did more of before I even got cast as in Buffy. You know, I got a, a funny bone that I like to exercise in a very dry, sarcastic way back in New York. I gave the commencement speech to the graduates, which was a very humbling experience to do that, right? <laughs> Scary and humbling both at the same time of a campus that I used to run wild on for four years. And now I'm giving them advice. I'm going, this is, I don't know if you really want my advice. I was gonna say, yeah, back at Ithaca, were you yeah. the upstanding citizen good student? Like, could you have ever imagined giving a commencement speech back when you were No, going? <laughs> no, I, I would say I was more of the night dweller. So that was the, <laughs> that's, that's I, a, I- That's a nice yeah. way to put it. That's a nice- yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's that was me. What's your kids' relationship to your work? Do they do they like have they seen Buffy and Angel? Know. Do they care? I'm sure they have. I mean, they're loving Buffy right now and singing <laughs> about it. Like I don't know. It always comes around, right? <laughs> My daughter, you know, 13, so she, I'm sure she, I, she may have, but she doesn't talk to me about it. Like yeah. she just probably healthier that way. Yeah, I guess, you know, like it's all good. And then, you know, she was on Bones. Actually, my daughter was on Bones. Nice. Jaden was on Bones. They cut their acting teeth. She was so cute. She did such a great job, <laughs> Bella. Which I was like, hey, you should do more. She's like, no, I'm riding my horse. I'm good. I'm a teenager. Leave me alone. Do you think you're done with genre stuff? I'm sure you've had so many offers over the years. I don't, for... you know, I, I don't think I'm done with anything. I, yeah. I, I, I keep my door open to what the possibility is for storytelling and if it fits and if it's got a weird name. Exactly. We found the criteria. Go for it. We we may have found like what how it, the the magical question. It could have been the answer if it's a strange name and everybody says no, then do it. I don't know. Seal Team's kind of not so weird. So that, that well, might it was be a the kind outlier. of a weird name. I mean, I, we didn't know were we going to call it Seal Team. Was it going to call Dev Grew? Was it going to be like Haze? Like what was the title going to be? And then when they came out, Seal Team was like, yeah, okay. See, really? I don't know. <laughs> I still I, don't. I don't know, man. What's in the name? It's like. Well, you know, it, it works, so. It works, it definitely does. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I mean, I'm sure the fans are gonna start a campaign if they haven't already. You probably know Sarah Michelle is returning to the genre yeah. with Wolfpack. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure there's a spot for you, a guest spot if they, if you want it. You know, you never know. I know I've, I'd, uh, I think what would be cool is for maybe me and Sarah to do a really cool genre, like subject matter, not act in it, but, but maybe be, be behind it and mm -hmm. drive it to a really cool, storytelling place. Maybe that's possible. So we wrap up every conversation here, David, with something we call the Summit Six. I'm gonna ask you okay. a few questions here. You do your best, here we go. Who 
is the unsung hero in the story of your career? I'd say my mom in a lot of ways. I remember receiving a letter from her when she was staying at the Ashford Castle in Ireland, and it was I still have that letter today. And it was it was a time in my life when I had just moved out to California, and I was very, what am I going to do? Or did I make the right decision? And her letter was so touching and moving to me that the spirit of that energy kept me going. Nice. What's your party trick? If I run into you at a party and you want to impress me or others, what's your weirdest Zippo, skill? Zippo, man. I'm a Zippo guy. Zippo king. Can flip them open. Can spin them. It's, I'm <laughs> always, if you watch all the shows I'm in, I always have something, you know, kind of a prop. I'm a prop guy, so nice. Zippos are pretty good with me. What's something you can geek out about for hours? Something I geek out about for hours? Man, Planet of the Apes, Starsky and Hutch, good 70s television, man. I love it. Okay, Definitely. Let's, let's book our follow-up. I could, I could go with you there. I totally uh, <laughs> rock that session, man. <laughs> Where and when do you feel most creative? Uh, I've always found that, you know, when I'm swimming in the pool, water always has uh, uh, that energy power to do that, right? To yeah. It kind of flying on an airplane, um, you know, playing ho ice hockey when I don't hear anything. You know, it's like white noise to me. Right. Um, working out, you, you get these kind of messages, right? You're these, these cool, and even while I'm working on the set, uh, you get these great ideas. If you could go back and study anything with the luxury of time, no worries, anything in school you'd want to study? I'd probably be a farmer. Great tractor and it's a good lunch waiting for you and a meal at the end of the day. It's, it's simple. I like it. All right, finally, finish this sentence for me. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would not do that. <laughs> I'm very happy with where I am and I have no regrets and I, you know, I live in the now. Good for you, man. Uh, yeah. Look, I really respect the work. I respect the work ethic. I respect your choices in unusual sounding properties. Get this man his next show after <laughs> SEAL Team runs 10 more seasons, of course. Let's find him another weird sounding show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'm developing that one. There you Stay go. Stay tuned. All right. There you go. I will. Thanks for the time, buddy. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. To see David in action, and I do mean that literally, considering the stunts, explosions, and high-stakes missions Bravo Team embarks on, stream season six of SEAL Team exclusively now on Paramount+. Plus.